Hello, my name is Vibeke and uh, the next five minutes I will uh, talk to you about autism and ADHD and uh, today especially about living a life where you are blamed or cursed about doing the wrong things in the wrong time, saying the wrong words um, or in the wrong time. Lots of uh, kids and actually grown-ups too I think is living such a life in fear for doing the wrong thing, saying the wrong words, um, misunderstanding uh, the project or what it can be. Um, I'm, I'm a teacher and I know and I deep in my heart I think kids with ADHD and autism is blamed much too much and understood much too little. Um, because we, um, and, and I do understand the teacher. When, when the kid for the third time is uh, traveling around the classroom and making noises, um, doing, yeah, I don't know what, doing something you had to stop as a teacher, then it is easy to say stop and do it now and I do not want you to raise up again. I do not want you to make any noise the rest of this uh, lection, um, uh, what it can be. but. I think we had to understand instead, why is he doing it? Lots of kids with ADHD is having this hyperactivity in their body and the body is doing things, it's just leaving without asking the brain, can I leave now? Will it be okay to take a walk now? The body is just doing it because of the hyperactivity in the body um, drives it to move or to make noises or to uh, make a contact uh, 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 or what it can be um, the body drives it because it has ADHD and every time the teacher is coming saying now I don't want to say it anymore now you stop this the stress will increase because oh I had to do it I had to stay I had to make my work and I had to be quiet and the brain is doing such a hard time in controlling the body that it cannot learn anything and um, it cannot keep the control for long 10 minutes the body is walking off again instead I would like us to as a, as a teacher uh, or parent to see this to see the hyperactivity and see what can we do to help you now is it to give you a two minutes break run run round the school round the schoolyard uh, jump um, walk out and yell something out um, use your habit activity to do something um, and then come back with more calm body which actually can work the homework or, or just be quiet in the, uh, in the lecture uh, lots of kids with autism is saying no when the teacher is saying now you had to write your name you had to do that and you had to no I can't Yes, no I can't. And, and many kids with autism um, can't manage to say I cannot do it because because there's too much noise or because I, I'm not having a red pencil and you said we had to use a red pencil so I can't do it. But they can't explain why they can't do it. And they are blamed, they are getting caught about it. When I tell you what to do, what you had to do, you do it and that's it. Um, you are lazy. Maybe we, we tell them uh, we tell them that they are lazy or they are stupid. Or, well, are you so stupid you don't understand what what the project is? And the uh, and the guy or girl with autism can be left thinking, I'm stupid, I'm lazy, I'm not clever. I'm and actually it was just because he didn't have a red pencil, and the project needed a red pencil, and he couldn't say please. Can you give me a red pencil? Because it, it didn't, it didn't make all the connections to say that out loud. Um, I have a, an episode I will share to you fast. I haven't got much time. Um, it was a boy. Uh, I think he was about um, seventeen years old, maybe sixteen, and uh, the whole day he was blamed because he's mixing up. He's uh, telling the other what not to do, like a policeman in the classroom. And, and 
it stresses out both the teachers and the other pupils. Um, this is the end of the day almost, and one teacher has been sitting down with him and saying, now I need you to understand what you're doing to the other boys and girls in this classroom when you are the policeman and tell them what to do and what to not do all the time. He, uh, he starts uh, being a little bit aggressive. His, he has ADHD and autism, and uh, the ADHD make him very aggressive on a very, uh, very fast. Uh, and when he said, don't say that to me again, I, I won't hear it anymore. Another teacher is coming and mixing up and say, I agree with the first teacher. You had to uh, understand this. Then something totally broke down in here because she was mixing up, telling him that he was not allowed to mix up. And he really, he, he really wanted to hit her. But he instead he was thinking, I had to put this out in a nice way. So he said, will you please stop mixing up now, please? And he was thinking, I, I'm doing this the nicest way I can do it. But he was sent home from school and shouldn't be back next day because, as a punishment because he was so rude to the teacher. But in his head, he wasn't rude. He was polite. He needed to hit her. But he instead he said it the most polite way he could. But he was not understood. Like many of our children with ADHD and autism, they, they are not understood. And we had to do something about it. We cannot just blame them. We had to understand them and help them. 